Well, Ann Coulter is here to straighten us all out. Now, she's a best-selling author, of course. Have you read her book, In Trump We Trust? It's a big bestseller. And uh, her new column comes out tomorrow. You should go to AnnCoulter.com and sign up when you're there. That way you get everything first. They get the column before everybody else, AnnCoulter.com. And, of course, follow her on Twitter. Ann Coulter, how you doing? Fantastic after that press conference. We can trust Donald Trump. Yes, but the uh, liberals, they have cranked up the crazy, haven't they? Oh, this is their Reichstag fire, and all the rest of the Republicans are running for the hills. It's the damnedest thing. All you have to do is say racist, and um, Republicans turn into a quivering mass of, of cowardice. Um, with now Mitt Romney and, and Marco Rubio saying that it's okay to smash windows, turn over cars, and, and beat people, attempt to murder them, as long as you say you're doing it to stop fascism. So um, all constitutional and civil rights have been suspended um, on the basis of labels the criminals create. Um, it's really unbelievable what's happening. Needless to say, this is what I'm writing about. And I was, I was just thrown into the depths of despair yesterday. We have 90% of the, cons- quote, conservative media, uh, 95% of elected uh, Republicans, um, and needless to say, the entire media and the entire Democratic Party um, raising, you know, just insane claims. Wow, they are quick to discern all the motives and everything that's going on here. Oh, this is Trump's fault, the rise of fascism. It'll be open season on anyone they deem a, con- a conservative, including Charles Murray, Heather McDonald. I mean, this violence has been going on, left-wing really vicious and often murderous violence for the past year. There were the um, two Bernie sub- supporters who either committed murder or attempted to committed murder to commit murder just in the last six months um it started a year ago with um that that trump rally in chicago um that was the first time violence was used to to shut down a a peaceable assembly the trump rally in chicago and you had ted cruz among others blaming donald trump donald trump for holding a rally those those nice those nice, you know, families, women, children in MAGA hats showing up for the Trump rally, and the leftist animals just cut loose, beat them up, um, shut down the rally. Then we had it again at various other Trump rallies in San Jose. Police are told to stand down. No, as long as as long as the left label their victims quote fascists, um, Berkeley. I was prevented from speaking. Milo was prevented from speaking. As I mentioned before, the, um, well, intellectual, but kind of a jerk, um, Charles Murray, who was fanatically anti-Trump, he was shut down at Middlebury. Oh, they called him a racist. Heather McDonald out of Claremont College. And the police over and over again are told to step down. Even that left-wing professor out at Evergreen State. Um, Left wing, um, I believe he was himself a Bernie supporter, um, but because he refused to leave campus one day because of his skin color, um, the mob called him a racist and the police were told to stand down. He is now having to teach at a college with, with leftist mobs and no police protection. This is the country we're in right now. Um, now for the first time, you know, the leftists, the violent leftists, they call themselves anti-fa, anti-fascist, and because they call themselves that, Mitt, Mitt, Mitt Romney and Marco Rubio say they can do anything. They can smash store windows and turn over cars. Um, so that's what that's what the governor of Virginia thinks. That's what the police of of Charlottesville think. Um, they happen to attack a group this time that 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 had that apparently had some people, some people who knows how many with some Nazi signs and some people willing to fight back. Um, so now it's supposed to be you know this raging right wing violence across the country. I do think it's worth pointing out before this entire, and I have, I have no idea what invite the right is. Pretty much everybody thinks this guy, Richard Spencer, um, is a jerk. Um, but the, 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 the ostensible purpose for the rally was to defend um, the, the American history, these Confederate monuments, um, 
We don't really know what the speakers were going to say or what the majority position was, whether any of them were going to, as the media seems to presume, promote, I don't know, white power, um, because they weren't allowed to speak. So we don't know. What we have are a few pictures, but I would remind you at this point, we also have a picture of that poor, drowned Syrian child that was supposed to be representative of the migrant crisis in Europe. The media picks and chooses which photos they're showing showing us. We don't know. We don't know what James Field's um, um, motive was, by the way. He, um, as, as the police, were apparently intentionally pushing the, the protesters who had a permit, unlike the counter-protesters, into the line of the violent counter-protesters. The park has, obviously, it's a square park. There are four sides. The police blocked three of the four sides with Antifa, the violent leftist, quote, anti-fascist on one side. They forced the, the rally at participants to go straight into the arms of the violent leftists. At some point at that time, yeah, okay, we, we know that um, James Fields um, hit, the, hit the gas pedal, sped into a group of counter-protesters, quickly sped back again. But I, I, I think it's worth pointing out, We don't know. Was it an accident? Was he panicked? Was he in fear for his life? Or was it malicious and intentional? We don't know. Remember um, a couple of years ago here in New York, um, that biker gang that surrounded the Asian family on the West Side Highway, and the Asian guy um, ended up running over, intentionally running over, um, right through a group of the bikers who had surrounded his car, paralyzing one for life. Um, He wasn't even prosecuted because he was in fear for his life. They had attacked him, um, and eventually they caught up with him, pulled him out of the car, and beat him up. Um, And also remember the Santa Monica Market case a few years ago. An old guy who probably should have had his driver's license taken away, um, hit the gas pedal and, and not the brake, sped through the Santa Monica market, killing 10 people. 10 people. He was tried, um, found guilty of manslaughter, and given probation. Um, so we really don't know. The media is very quick to ascribe motives in some cases. Um, it took them, you know, the Obama administration six years to determine the motive of the Muslim uh, yelling Alu Akbar at Fort Hood and gunning down our soldiers. No, that was workplace violence. Well, we, we definitely need an investigation, federal investigation, to find out exactly who ordered the police to stand down, who ordered them yes. and directed them to behave in a very bizarre way that seemed to escalate the whole thing. And also, you know, these guys like Ted Cruz and Rubio and the Charles Krauthammers of the world, uh, I think they, they love using this as an excuse to return to their default position, their real position, which is hate Trump. And that goes for Paul Ryan and all these guys. Yes, yes, and you throw the fuel on the fire of, um, oh, someone said racism, I've just lost my mind. So when you, you're watching Fox or somewhere and you say, how come all these people turn so fast? That's their real position. It was an excuse to get back to it, which is deep down what they always wanted to say. You, you know, Cruz and Rubio, when they pretended to be on board, yeah. were never on board. No, I know, and and uh, that press conference yesterday, <laughs> I mean, it, Trump is like Gary Cooper standing out there all alone. I mean, for the con- from the conservative media, it's basically your Twitter feed, my Twitter feed, Breitbart and Daily Caller are the only parts of the conservative media that have not turned tail and run. And, oh, it's, it's outrageous that we must denounce Trump and, and we're so full of racists. Oh, for Pete's sake, for the past year, there has been incessant violence in this country, incessant violations of civil rights, and as I say, murder and mayhem, and it has all come from the left. I mean, it would be one thing if, if this hadn't been happening, um, we'd still need an investigation to find out what happened Saturday, but it's exactly the reverse of what they're saying, um, at least at least in in you know ninety nine cases out of one hundred, and only Trump would even mention the 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 incessant monstrous violence that was coming from the other side. Incidentally, um, I love this. Cheryl um, Gay Stolberg, very left wing professor um, or professor reporter for the New York Times, was on the scene and live tweeting what was happening and t- tweeted out not only um, what are the police doing. 
here. They seem to be throwing fuel on the fire, but also said um, the alt-left counter-protesters are every bit as violent as, as the rally-goers. Obviously, her prejudice was to assume all the violence would be coming from the right. But no, 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 even she said that, so, so her little liberal friends ganged up on her <laughs> and are demanding that she retract it. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, hey, we're out of time. I, I, I saw you, you were in the Hamptons signing books next to Alec Baldwin. <laughs> Not exactly next to him, but yes, I was I was in the center of the proletariat resistance, Mark. They have a big event where all the top authors in America sign their books, and there you were. That was good. Boy, there are a lot more right-wingers in East Hampton than they, they know. Liberals should be afraid. Yeah, you liberals. Uh, you think, <laughs> oh, everybody, nobody's going to buy that, but they're all giving her, like, the high sign, winking at her. <laughs> Yeah, I sold out before anyone else, and my dinner was sold out before anyone else. <laughs> well, that's good. I was done in about 45 minutes. <laughs> well, actually, uh, make sure you follow Ann Coulter on Twitter. Uh, and if you, you haven't read the book, it's a big bestseller. Uh, it's called In Trump We Trust. Now's a good time to get that book. And uh, go to AnnCoulter.com and sign up there. Your new column comes out tomorrow. Tonight. Tonight. And very important. Read it right away. Well, if you sign up at AnnCoulter.com, you get it right away before everybody else. AnnCoulter.com. Ann Coulter, thanks for being with us. Good to talk to you, Mark Simone. Bye-bye. Right, take care.